Welcome to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Andrea, and in my household, there's me, my husband, and our handsome little boy. On our channel, I make simple meals using convenient pantry and freezer staples. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am making a cheesy chicken pot pie. It's a recipe that I found in a gooseberry patch cookbook, and I'll make sure to leave the recipe in the description box. Having to make some modifications based on what I have on hand. Um, so I'm using two cups of chopped chicken, and the recipe calls for two cups of shredded cheddar cheese, but I have this sliced cheese and a little bit of shredder che shredded cheddar cheese that I needed um, to use up, so I'll be using that instead of shredded. Supposed to use two cans of cream of potato soup. I only had one, so I'm adding in a can of cream of chicken soup. And then you're supposed to use a 16 ounce can of mixed veggies. We're not a big fan of mixed veggies. So I have an eight ounce can of cut green beans and an eight ounce can of corn that I'm gonna drain and use for my veggies. For my pie crust, uh, you need two. And I am using Trader Joe's pie crust. I love this pie crust. I love Pillsbury too, but this really tastes homemade. And I love it because it is made with butter, as you can see it's, uh, right there, at the, almost at the very end. Whenever you get their pie crust, they are going to be kind of cracked up and broken. That's okay. It comes in this parchment paper. And so you're just gonna need to use a roller just to smooth it out before you use it for baking. But anyway, I'm gonna mix everything up and pop it into the oven. Okay, so here is the filling all mixed up. I just um, took the cheese slices and just kind of broke them apart and added them to the mixture. And then I wanted y'all to see what that crust looks like once I um, use a rolling pin on it and spread it out. So this is the bottom crust. Gonna add my filling and then top it with the uh, top crust and put some slits in it. And then I'm gonna let this bake for about an hour at 350 degrees. Okay, so here is the pot pie after I cut it open. I did not let this pot pie cool nearly long enough, um, but here is the slice. And um, right here on this side, that is the bottom crust, so you can see that it is cooked through. But this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, I am making a large dinner salad and I wanted to make some garlic bread to go with it, some cheesy garlic bread. I had a couple of pieces of um, this naan in the freezer. So I just have it on a baking sheet. I spread some unsalted butter, garlic powder, and dried parsley on top. And next I'm just gonna add some of this pizza cheese. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top and then cook it at 400 degrees until that cheese is nice and bubbly. And then I'm just gonna cut it up into strips so we can have it with our salads. Okay, so our cheesy bread and dinner salads are ready. So let me show you what I put um, in our, into our salad. I had like a handful of this um, tri-colored cabbage mixture left that I added into this Italian salad um, that I made that I picked up from Aldi. And then for the chicken that's on top of the salad, I use these chicken nuggets that I actually got for Harrison, but he will not eat them. So I put them in the air fryer. Um, and then I also added a hard boiled egg added some croutons that I crushed up. I like croutons. I don't like them whole. Um, so I crushed up my croutons and added them in there along with some red onion, Parmesan cheese. This is a salad dressing that I've recently started using. I love it. I used to buy the Aldi Caesar salad kits all the time. They were my favorite. They changed the recipe and it's just too mayo for me um, at this point. So I just make my own Caesar salads now. And this light creamy Caesar dressing is really good. It doesn't taste light and it doesn't taste mayo-y. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, Howard and I are having an early dinner. We are trying out a new Thai restaurant, new to us. And so right over here, we've already started on our appetizers which are um, egg rolls and they are really very good. 
They came with the dipping sauce. And then we also got some fried wontons and they are stuffed with chicken and they look absolutely delicious too. The egg rolls are just stuffed with, um, or just filled I should say, with veggies. So it's just cabbage in there, I think. But they are very good. And I will come back and show you our entrees. Okay, so our entrees just came. This is Howard's and he got Pad CU with chicken and it looks really good. And then I got Thai fried rice with beef and it looks so good. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, using up some pork steak that I had in my freezer. Had it for a while, I got it on clearance and Howard grilled it. So the marinade that I used on it is this um, Japanese barbecue sauce. You can buy it anywhere, but I got this large uh, bottle of it at Costco. Kind of has a teriyaki kind of flavor to it to me. And then we are having some pastaroni that I had in my pantry that we needed to use up. Um, angel, ha angel hair pasta with herbs and then we are having some fresh Brussels sprouts that I cooked in clarified butter. And then for the seasoning, I used this. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we will see y'all next time. Hey guys, so dinner tonight is going to be very, very simple. I'm gonna be making some chicken patties. I like to keep stuff like this on hand for those nights where I really just need to get dinner on the table quickly. I'm also going to be making some buttered corn and I'm going to be using some mashed potatoes that I had in my fridge. Now, normally I do make homemade mashed potatoes, um, but I wanted to try these because these were on sale at HEB and I just wanted to see how they were. And then I'm going to make some creamed gravy using bacon fat um, that I just keep in my fridge in this old jar. Okay, so I have a fourth of a cup of bacon fat um, melted in a large pan and to that I'm adding two tablespoons of flour. And now I'm just using a whisk to combine that bacon fat and that flour. And I'm just going to let this cook for about three to five minutes until everything is well combined. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, that mixture has turned brown, and now I'm just pour, pouring in, excuse me, um, about two cups of milk, and I'm just stirring it around, and I'm just gonna let that mixture come to a boil and thicken up. Okay, so here is the gravy. It took about 10 minutes to get to the texture that I prefer. Now, if you like it thicker or thinner, definitely adjust that flour um, and milk. Again, I used a quarter cup of bacon fat. If you don't eat pork, you can definitely use um, vegetable oil. You can use butter. And like I said, I used two tablespoons of flour. It took about 10 minutes for it to get to this texture. And that's the texture that I like. I did salt and pepper um, to taste. Okay, so here is dinner all plated up. I've got my buttered corn, the mashed potatoes, the chicken patty, and of course the gravy. The mashed potatoes are pretty good. Again, this is my first time having them because they were on sale, but they're good. They've got pieces of potato skins in there. Great flavor, not as good as homemade, but definitely a really close substitute. I would for sure buy them again. So if you're in Texas, and you've got an HEB -E nearby, definitely give those potatoes a try. But anyway, this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we will see y'all next time.